Well, thanks everyone for coming. My name is Brian Peterson, and I'm the president-elect for the Medical Society. I'm also the Milwaukee County Medical Examiner. So I know what you're thinking. Oh, no. <laughs> We've just had dinner, and there's a forensic pathologist up there. True. The good news is I don't have pictures. Sorry. <laughs> so it'll be okay. Um, this night, tonight I want to touch briefly on a topic very close to my profession, that is drug deaths in our county. Um, simply put, last year, we, every year in Milwaukee County, we have about 10,000 deaths. That's to be expected. Anybody know what the death rate is in this country, by the way? Uh, it's 100%, get it? So, <laughs> actually, it's a little bit over that because the EMS system is very good. So some people get resuscitated, then they die again. So it bumps the average a little bit over 100%. But that's a different story. So, of the roughly 10,000 deaths a year that we have in Milwaukee County last year for the first time, about 4% were from drug overdose. About half of those were from heroin. All right, the whys of that are a long story. But what's clear is that something needs to be done. It's a huge death toll, and it's not old people end of life being given these medications in hospice. Generally, it's younger people dying in the community. It truly is a waste. How are we going to fix that? Well, if there's one thing that I've learned in the ME setting, I can't fix anything. I mean, once the patients come to me, they've passed their exit exam. Um, now it's just up to me to determine the cause. So I can't have much to do with that part of it. But you do learn some things standing around the autopsy table. One of the things that you learned, quiz question for medical students, how many bones are there in a human body? About 202. How did I do? Okay. Of the 202, 33 of those represent the vertebral column. Okay. One thing's for sure, anybody out there in the community that's going to take on the issue of drug death and drug overdose is going to have to have a very strong vertebral column. Our next award winner, uh, Attorney General Brad Schimmel, definitely does. I would say his vertebral column goes well beyond strong. It's, he truly has a set of brass vertebral bodies. <laughs> So, so probably an interesting question is, why would we take an attorney, and he is one, he'll admit that, and, and give him a health care champion award? You, you hear health care champion, you tend to think doctor. The reason is, is that the scope of this issue and the death toll that it causes in our community, I think is well beyond what a group can do. Clearly, physicians as a group are, uh, have a certain degree of influence. The medical society has a higher degree of influence, but it's going to have to be even bigger than that. It's going to require doctors, dentists, law enforcement, the legal profession, pretty much any kind of, any kind of authority and the help that we can muster to, to take this problem on and do something about these just unbelievable numbers. So, um, Brad made this a feature of his campaign for Attorney General. We're going to take him up on his word for that. And as a medical society, we're going to stand with him and do anything that we can to influence the issue. In the meantime, I will follow along behind with the broom and a dustpan doing my small part. So, this year's award, uh, Healthcare Champion Award, goes to Attorney General Brad Schimmel. Those of you who know Dr. Peterson know how nervous I was about being introduced by him. <laughs> and yes, I do admit that I am an attorney. And there are a couple of good reasons why I'm an attorney. First is in, in high school, I just could not wrap my head around chemistry. So heading to the medical field wasn't going to happen. And the other reason is seven years of college is all I could handle. Holy cow, that's it. Now, this is such a tremendous honor to be, I am familiar with Dr. Schuler's work uh, through the clinic that opened up in Waukesha County through the 16th Street Clinic. It's such an honor to be among a group with her and Dr. Willis and Megan Beck, that remarkable young lady that's getting an award tonight too. This is really incredible, but the real honor is because well, first I want to talk about something that's surprising, and that is that the board of the Milwaukee Medical Society would actually give me a microphone again, because when I spoke to their group uh, about a month and a half ago, I think they had set aside 20 or 25 minutes for me, and I think at 50 minutes later, um, they were still trying to get me away from the microphone. So I'm surprised they gave me another shot tonight. I promise. Yeah, I promise. I won't abuse it. I won't abuse it like I did that night. But um, the honor is really because you are going to be such great partners in this effort because we have something in common. I was 25 years as a prosecutor in the Waukesha DA's office and I saw 
every day the faces of the people affected by these addictions and you also see those faces so we have a shared passion for getting this done we had a face we had a uh, voices of recovery event in Waukesha yesterday and uh, we had a family come and talk about what is involved when uh, opiate addiction affects impacts a family you know it started with the young man who's in his he's in his mid 20s now he's been 6 years clean and sober but he recalls in his teens when he was 16 years old he had written himself off he assumed that it's just in one of these days now I'm going to die and I will never see 18 much less 20s um, his sister talked and she told everyone in the room how she hated him during that time because because of him his par her parents were fighting every day because of him her mom cried every day and when she got married he couldn't be in her wedding because she wasn't sure he'd be a, he'd be alive for the day so she couldn't plan her wedding around that and that's a that's a priceless life experience lost forever um, their dad talked and he talked about regret how for years he and his wife ignored their daughter and all of her needs because everything revolved around their son and the destruction he was wreaking in their family and uh, he talked about how frustrated he was with his son he wouldn't use the word hate but he just you could see it so vividly how terrible those years were on a father who could not protect he couldn't keep his own son safe and he felt like an utter failure because of it and then the mom who talked about all those days where she cried every day and talked about um, how she realized at some point she could no longer be her son's friend and she had to she called him one of the times he was in jail and she said listen you are dead to our family can you imagine as a mom saying that to your son but she had to tell him you're dead to us if you don't change and uh, you this is it you either take the opportunity for treatment and you get help or we can't we can't have you be part of our family anymore well that family's healthy now but they're but they're one of the lucky ones and there's far too many that aren't I'm tired of meeting parents who've buried their children I'm tired of it there's way too much of it and I'm not going to rest until we do something about it and I'm so honored that uh, that you would give me this award today because you are going to be such great partners in this and I'm looking forward to this fight and we're going to win this thank you very much